morning, boys and girls, and welcome back to Sunday School. I'm Miss Alicia, and I'll be your teacher this week. Now, our classroom probably looks a little bit different this week because I'm in my home, as most of you probably are, too. Our lesson this week comes from an event that happens during Holy Week. Jesus is giving of the Lord's Supper. And you might be familiar with the Lord's Supper. It's also called the Sacrament of the Altar or Communion. And likely you're not old enough to receive the Lord's Supper just yet, but probably mom and dad are, and maybe even big brother or big sister. And very soon you will too. So hopefully after today, you understand a little bit more about what the, what is happening during this holy meal. Now, all of this week, we've been celebrating or observing Holy Week. It began last Sunday with Palm Sunday. And hopefully you remember that lesson from Miss Amy about on Palm Sunday, how Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey while the people cheered and waved their palm fronds and laid them out before him like a, a carpet of green. Well, Palm Sunday is sometimes also referred to as Passion Sunday. And the word passion has many different meanings, but in this case, it means suffering or to suffer. So Passion Sunday refers to the suffering of Jesus. And we know from scriptures from the Bible that Jesus would suffer this Holy Week, that on Friday, what we call Good Friday, Jesus would suffer. He would be arrested and beaten and um, they would spit on him and mock him or make fun of him. And we know that he would eventually be crucified and he would die on the cross. But what we also know from the Bible is that Jesus would rise and go to heaven. And that's what we're celebrating on this glorious Easter Sunday. So we learned about Palm Sunday, and we learned about Easter Sunday, and we learned about Good Friday, but we're also going to learn today about Maundy Thursday. So every day during Holy Week, Jesus would go to the temple and he would teach. And then at night, he would go to the village and he would sleep, a village nearby, and he would sleep. Now, on Thursday, Jesus celebrated with his 12 disciples a feast, the Passover feast, or the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And we learn about that in the scriptures from Luke, and that's what our lesson is going to be about today. So I'm going to go ahead and read that um, that lesson from Luke chapter 22, verses 1 through 23. I'm going to read that quickly for you. Now, the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew near, which is called the Passover, and the chief priests and the scribes were speaking, seeking how to put him to death, for they feared the people. Then Satan entered into Judas called Iscariot, who was one of the number of twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers how he might betray him to them, and they were glad and agreed to give him money. So he consented and sought an opportunity to betray them to them in the absence of a crowd. Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent, to, sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat it. They said to him, Where will you have us prepare it? He said to them, Behold, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters, and tell the master of the house, The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished. Prepare it there. And they went and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when the hour came, he reclined at table, and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this meal with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance for them of me. And likewise, the cup after they had eaten, saying, this is this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But behold, the hand of him who betrays me is with me on the table. For the son of man goes as it has been determined. But woe to that man who by whom he is betrayed. And they began to question one another, which of them it could be who was going to do this. And that's a really long reading. But we learn a lot of really interesting things during this reading. First, we learned that the chief priests and scribes wanted to kill Jesus. And they wanted to kill Jesus because they were afraid of the people, because they knew the people were following Jesus and not them. And next, we learn about Jesus 
<clears throat> that Jesus was celebrating with his 12 disciples and that he had sent Peter and John to prepare the meal in that upper room that was furnished. And next we learn about the means of grace through which God forgives us. And I don't know if you remember those words or if you recognize them, but you should. So I'm gonna read these again for you, just so you can try and see if you remember them. <clears throat> After he took the bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave, gave it to them saying, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Now, do you remember those words? Do you remember, Pastor, saying those words sometimes during Sunday service? You should. These are called the words of institution. And they are spoken by the pastor um, of the con on behalf of the congregation. And they are words, of, they're words that Christ gives us in these scriptures that he spoke to his disciples. And pastor says them during our communion, during the, the uh, sacrament of the altar or the Lord's Supper, he says them in order to make the bread and the wine sacred. And these are a proclamation from Jesus. Jesus says, this is my body and this is my blood. So you may be wondering, why does Jesus do this? Why does he give us his body and his blood? And those are very good questions. Jesus says, it is given for you for the forgiveness of sins and for the strengthening of your faith. When we gather together to receive communion, we are proclaiming the benefits of Jesus's death on the cross <clears throat> that have come to us and we are giving him thanks for forgiving our sins. So I said earlier, you aren't old enough probably to be receiving uh, communion just yet, but you can have faith and rejoice that God gave you his faith in your baptism and that your faith is being heard by the or is being fed by the hearing of God's word through these scriptures through the church service through your Sunday school classes so very soon you will be receiving communion but until then you can have faith in the word of God that you are hearing through your family through your preacher through your Sunday school teachers through your teachers at ALIS all of those are feeding your faith. And so, do you remember that I called this Maundy Thursday? Not Monday Thursday, Maundy Thursday. And that is this day of Holy, or this day of Holy Week. So we learned about Passover, or the Palm Sunday. Sorry, we learned about Palm Sunday. We learned about Maundy Thursday. And next week, we're going to go into some more detail. Miss Amy will be back with you to talk more about Good Friday and what happens on that day. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson, and um, I can't wait to get back together with you guys and at church and see all your smiling faces again. I miss you so much, and I'd just like to close with a, a word of prayer. So if you don't mind, go ahead and bow your head and close your eyes. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for the gift of the sacrament of the altar. Thank you for giving your body and blood that we may have forgiveness, life, and salvation. Please strengthen our faith through your word that we may always trust in you. In your name we pray. Amen. Bye-bye, and I can't wait to see you again.